Hello and welcome to KubeCon. Um, today we're going to talk about Nature V2 supply chain security for containers. I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO at Docker. I'm a maintainer on Notary and a member of the CNCF Technical Oversight Committee. I work a lot with SIG Security and I'm really, I've been working on supply chain stuff for quite some time. And this is Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Lasker. I'm a PM architect in Azure, um, work on container registries, including ACR and MCR. Um, and as part of that, you know, with registries, we're sitting at the middle of all of the services in Azure that use containers from production services, the dev tools. So we see quite a lot of different scenarios. We talk to a lot of customers around the various scenarios. Uh, and of course, one of them has been around how do I sign my content so that as I consume upstream content from the community and bring it into my environment, how do I know it's that and how do I promote it within my environment and know it still has the same integrity. Uh, so Dotary has been a, a key focus for us and um, it kind of builds on the stuff we did with OCI artifacts. I'm a, a TOB member for OCI and a maintainer for OCI artifacts, which is how we leverage registries to store all kinds of content. And we'd like to be able to sign all kinds of content uh, so that there's this uh, integrity around it. So with that. So what, why are we doing this? So uh, until last year, really, when you, I used to have a much longer piece in here about why supply chain security, but Solar Winds last year really um, kind of uh, helped people understand what was, what was going on, that someone could attack some software, uh, attack, your supplier and insert soft, you know, insert malicious code into their software, you would bring it on-prem and it would start attacking you. This is kind of not what you want to happen. Um, and it's really brought this into the sort of public view. And it's like something that uh, people are much more aware of now. Um, friend of mine and the solar winds one is interesting because it was this attack. Um, well, where the attack happened was interesting. Like they, they had to figure that out. It wasn't based on containers. It was an older, you know, different technology, but the binaries were assigned. So they were able to realize that this wasn't some kind of production deployment environment hack. It was, it actually came from the build system and having that signed content that was deployed gave them the forensics to be able to go back and figure out where the, the breach happened. And that's something one we need to be able to bring to containers as well, so that we can know that when things go into containers, that we can, you know, attest to their their flow. Um, so it was it was just interesting how that that that, that breach um, affected so many different areas. One of the things about cloud native software is that it's you know, and modern software is in general, everything is controlled by software. So if someone control controls your software, they control everything that's running in production and they really own everything. Um, and often if people want to attack, then sometimes the supply chain build servers and things are, are the weakest link. And, um, you know, people have hardened their production environments, but they haven't hardened build. So let's attack build. So it really is a, um, you know, something that's been growing in importance. Um, just a, we're just recording this a bit ahead of time, but I think the CNCF SIG Security Software Supply Chain Best Practices white paper should be out for KubeCon. Um, it's a really great bit of work if you want to have more background on supply chain. So take a look at that. Um, and container security, I think it's, it's kind of interesting because for a long time with containers, people just talk about things like, you know, can I escape from a container? Like treating it like, like those boxes, so can I get out of the box? That's not really what's important about containers and shipping. The box is really just about standardization. The important thing is the whole process by which you know what's on your container, you get the bill of lading, you um, you know, you can trust that when the, when it arrives, you can put it straight into your supply chain, your factory, you've got the metadata with it about what what it is, and you can um, you know, as long as you're as long as it doesn't get stuck in the Suez Canal for a few weeks, you, you're, you're pretty much sure you know that you can order things remotely and get them and incorporate them into your products. Um, and then later, when you know when you have a product, if you have a problem with it, you can trace back which components went into it, from which, which containers they were in when they were being shipped, and which where they were at the, the factory. And we're trying to bring that kind of um, approach to containers. It was always something that was. Um, promised, but it's actually something that hasn't really been delivered for everyone in their day-to-day -day work yet. 
the interesting thing about this also is, you know, you, you've got the containers on the left and then you have this, you know, bill of lading or bill of materials, if you will, that says what's in it. And like, okay, you know, Justin could have made this himself on some you know, document, um, but there is a, a stamp on it. And the stamp has you know, a, a, an authenticity to it that says, no, this bill of lading was approved. The bill of lading represents what's in the container. Um, and there's a level of trust associated with that. And that's what we're trying to bring with containers. There's a, there's a lock on the container that says it wasn't tampered with. There's a document that says what's in the container, the bill of materials. And there is a, a lock on the document, the, the stamp, that says this, this is accurate. Um, that's a really good accurate representation of what we're trying to accomplish here with uh, container workflow uh, as things move forward. So what are we working on? So Notary V1 was created back in the 2015, and seems a long time ago in container land. When containers were pretty new based on the update framework, which is a CNCF project. Um, and it's been a CNCF project since 2017, so it's you know one of the one of the earlier projects. Um, it's supported by some registries such as Docker and Azure and IBM and Harbor, but not everywhere. Um, so users can't rely on it always being in the registry, which is kind of frustrating. It's got some users, but um, it never really was a widespread thing that um, you know the majority of people would actually use on a day-to-day -day basis. We learned a huge amount from the rollout, how people used it, what they tried to do, how, and all those things, which is really feeding into a lot of the design for V2. Um, and some areas we really want to fix, um, you know, these are some of them, but they're probably the most important ones. First of all, the signature is not being native to registries and compatible with all registries is a real problem. It was a separate database and there were portability issues about moving the signatures around. Uh, didn't have the, it wasn't just didn't have the APIs, but things were actually tied to the names of the locations. Nowadays, people use a lot of registries. You know, you might um, you might use you might get some images from Docker Hub. You might have a private registry on Azure. You might have JFrog on Prem. You know, all sorts of combinations of registries and uh, for different purposes and different stages of the lifecycle. So that's really important now. It wasn't so important back in 2015. To be, I mean, where where you know, there's one registry. It was one, yeah, Docker Hub. That was it. <laughs> Don't need any more registries. Um, and part of, but like part of this is that we we continue to hear from customers that you know it's not just dependent on a single source of failure that's out on the internet that has nothing to do with Docker Hub. It's the network connections, but it's also the update cycle, right? We want to be able to consume public content, whether it be containers or package managers or other things, but we want to bring them into your you know into our environment into the environment that that customer represents and says this is the environment that I trust there's a security boundary on it I, and nothing's randomly getting changed on me even for good or bad intentions but how do you promote that workflow how do you take the content from upstream bring it into your environment promote it across your own environment and know that that content was never tampered with yeah absolutely other issues were a lot of keys to manage um, a separate key, well, a separate set of keys for each repository, which when you were managing repositories at scale was really difficult to manage. Um, and debugging issues was complicated. The introspection tooling wasn't, as, uh, it wasn't that great. Um, security engineers assume that when something fails, verifying a signature, that that's probably a hostile attack that they've just thwarted. Yay! But actually, they finally have something. They, that's what they can do. They're ready. Yeah. To, they're ready to engage. Yeah, but unfortunately, sometimes it's like users using the wrong key. The users uh, cert has expired. Like all sorts of other reasons that are actually um, need better debugging tooling. Um, but it's, then, it's more the debugging tool, right? Also, it's just that balance of how complex. Does something have to be to solve a problem? Because the more complex it is, the more places for things to fail, the more difficult it is to use. And if it's difficult to use and complex, it's, which got more failures, it's not gonna get as much adoption. Also, I mean, I think, yeah, it's important that people understand what's going on and they can, you know, they, I mean, I think that's what debuggability to me mean. it means that the mental model of what's going on fits with your, with the reality of what's really going on behind the scenes. And I think there was a few issues around that as well. And then there was kind of issues around um, registries. Um, the, the tough model was designed around package repos where you only have the current 
um, content in, and whereas registries have everything in, and that didn't fit so well with the update model and in the update framework. And um, there was just a kind of a bit of a mismatch where the security models weren't quite right, and we needed to kind of tidy that up a bit. We've also got a whole bunch of new requirements. Um, so people want to. Uh, one actually one of the first things people started asking about was really being able to add more signatures later on. So uh, people often have this workflow they want to do where they want to mark um, the state of approval of something by signing it. Um, and so like uh, when, it, when this is approved for production, we want to put a signature and then we just want to check that signature for prod. Um, but that wasn't terribly easy to do. It wasn't the kind of security model it was designed for with V1. And then there's this really important thing about adding additional metadata. So you want to add that bill of materials. You want to add um, other, you know, other th other things, scan reports on the image and things like that that you um, want to add after build, um, and you want to sign the addition of that so that people can validate that that is, um, you know, it's, uh, you you can attest that the S bomb goes with uh, can, with the image, um, and so that's really been something that's become. Uh, particularly important in the last year or so as the SBOM standards get approved and people understand what the what the value of being able to add extra metadata afterwards is. It's not, you know, it's not just SBOMs. And then it's not just about containers, as Steve mentioned before, people are putting lots of things or plan, you know, starting to put lots of things into registries and these have different requirements as well um, in different formats. Um, we're really trying to do incremental improvements. Uh, right now, hardly anyone uses container image signing at all. And so we really want to you know, make it easy to use it um, at scale. Uh, it's a community project with very broad involvement from registries and end users and cloud providers, all sorts of people, um, which is great. So we're getting lots of different requirements, but we're picking the things that we can you know, ship it earlier that, that help people right now um, and laying a foundation for people to be able to experiment and build more stuff later on. We want to get the base infrastructure out there, you know, standard standardization in um, OCI and, you know, as well in terms of like, how do we put this stuff in the registry, formats, extensibility, uh, and then we want to have, you know, tooling, which we're going to demo to you shortly, so our prototype tooling, um, and tools for policy management and, you know, wide availability and interop. But we want to let, you know, we'll start with flexible base tools and build up, you know, people want to do, people have specialized requirements and want to build specialized tools, that's great as well. It's the, the libraries, it's right, it's not just the tools, like the tools will be backed by libraries and specs so that you can use these libraries in other scenarios that we hadn't thought of. I mean, yeah. like we're not trying to, containers are used in, in so many different places. We don't, you know, we'll talk about open policy agent as a, a Kubernetes solution, but we want to make sure that you can do wherever you're running containers, like with container D um, uh, libraries and so forth. Absolutely, yes. Um, so the first stage work in progress design is being finalized by the time you hear this talk, it might be finalized hopefully so we will be able to give you more notes in the live chat during the, while you're watching this um we kind of scope it as kind of equivalent to git commit signing for containers so it's like individual one-off signatures not the kind of um tough update sign a sequence of containers type thing for now um just give point in time signatures um there's going to be x509 support because lots of people have some people have X509 infrastructure and people want to use that. Not everyone has infrastructure now, so we'll have some easy tooling anyway. Um, there's lots of requirements we've got around having key management. For example, if you want to use a cloud key, your, a cloud service to manage your keys or um, Vault or something like that, or you have, want to use hardware keys, like the YubiKey I've got right here, um, those kinds of things. You know, So we're, we've got a lot of people who want to use um, you know, remote key management, things like that. Uh, Nedry V1 had some support, but we're going to have a lot more. Um, just want to make it more flexible. Like the whole idea is don't lock yeah. you in. If you've got a, a way for managing your keys, you should be able to use that. Um, that's the main point. Yeah. And then as we said before, like Iper and Container D libraries and all the kind of tooling we need to build this into tools like Docker and so on. 
So the plan is to ship a usable signing solution in the second half of 2021 um, and support widespread usage. Then go ahead and iterate on that, work out what's working, what else people need, improvements we can make, um, you know, all the things that people need to make it easy to use and widespread. Um, while we're also establishing a working group on specifically on pipeline security for software factories, which is an area where the, the guarantees that are from Tuffin and Toto make a lot of sense um, for actually guaranteeing that something went through a pipeline, went through the pipeline stages, and this software is one is you know one piece of a flow of updates of software that you're going to feed into your production systems. Um, so. Um, that work, um, and that's intended to be signed, you know, in, in CI, probably with ephemeral keys using Spiffy and things like that. So that's a working group that we're going to, um, we'll have going also for future, future work. I'm going to do a demo of where things are now. Um, so this is really a demonstration of signing artifacts and S-bombs. Um, and how, how things will work. It's not like uh, picture perfect, but it's like directionally what we're looking at. I mean, basically, you know, we have container images that we're storing in registries. And the interesting thing is about how that is stored uh, because that turns out to be very generally useful for a number of different things uh, that we've been able to put in registries. And you know, up till today or up until artifacts were created, the OC artifacts project, people were stuffing all kinds of things in, but making them look like container images, like the old way we used to change the, the extension on the file when we try to attach it to an email. So what we're gonna be able to do is support adding Notary V2 signatures into a registry that would be stored as a blob in the in that artifact, which is, looks like an image, but it's, it knows it's a signature. The new thing that we're adding is the ability to add a reference from that signature to the image. And the directionality there is pretty important. If you notice the, the image points down to the layers and the signature points to its blob that contains a signature, but it also has this reverse lookup reference that says, hey, by the way, this signature is associated with that image. So that reference concept is really important because it allows us to add multiple signatures, or in this case, if we wanted to add a bill of materials document, um, then it also is just another document. Like we're a call about an SBOM here, but if you wanna add yet another artifact type, it, yeah, you can do that as well. Store it as an artifact in a registry, give it the reference to what it associates with. And now you are starting to build this graph. And just like we saw with the bill of lading of the, the ship, the bill of, bill of materials here, we have a signature on it to make sure it's attested to. So if you look, there's this interesting graph of artifacts of which one of those things, artifacts types is a signature. And that's the fundamental concept that we've been working on. Uh, so with that, let me see, I'll uh, do a little screen share switch. And um, so what we've done is for the purpose of this experience, we've added uh, a plugin for Docker. And if you notice there's BuildX, for instance, as a plugin, there's NV2 that we've also put as a plugin as well. So just to, make things a little easier to not have to type Docker NV2 every time. I'm just going to create an alias. And I'm also going to just create an environment variable for my um, uh, artifact name, the net monitor v1 image. Uh, I'll just create as an alias. Now, the first thing we'll do is just kind of do a Docker build. So I'm going to build and I'll tag it that fully qualified name. And you know, voila, I now have uh, an image in my uh, images, uh, the net monitor image here. Now, we want to be able to support ephemeral clients that are boot up in each time they're being run, so they're always on a refresh state. Uh, but we also want to be able to support signing before it ever leaves that environment. So what I'm going to do is enable notary. And again, these are just temporary names. Naming is hard. We're just This is just what we've done for now. And then I'm going to say Docker, um, uh, Docker notary sign. And what we're doing is signing it with a key and a cert. And I'm just saying, here's the image that I want to sign. 
So we generated a manifest, we signed it, and the signature itself was saved locally so that we can uh, push it later. Um, but the idea is now I've got an artifact that's signed locally. So now I can say Docker push. And because we have this plugin that we've extended for Docker, which is, you know, it, it represents the experience we're shooting for, it'll change, but an example, that what we've done is we've pushed the, the image and the signature, and there's a link between the signature and the image. So now I've actually already pushed that graph into the registry. So we talked about a set of libraries that we're um, adding. Let me just see if I can paste that book clearly. Uh, one of the libraries we've been using around artifacts is something called ORES, OCI Registry as Storage. It's something a couple of uh, some of the folks put together to enable this experience. And uh, we've added a, a Discover API that says, let me discover the things that are associated with that image. And we'll just output through JQ, jQuery to uh, get a better view of it. So what you're seeing is here's the image and we've got a collection of references. And if we look, here's the manifest of that, that there is a, there's one reference in here. In this case, it is an artifact type of CNCF notary V2. There is the signature in a blobs collection and the manifest collection points back to the digest of that image. So that kind of gives you a pretty powerful uh, experience that I can now push these two things into the registry. Now, that's great. We've got the image, we've got the signature in the registry. Um, if I want to uh, get rid of, actually, if I want to spell images, right? So we've got that here. If I want to, Docker RMI, chef, we'll just kind of cheat. And of course, it'll. So now, if I do minus it, minus a minus q, not minus a minus a. You typed it wrong. You mistyped. What's that? You typed minus a minus a, not minus a minus q. Oh, did I? Uh, yeah, I'm no, just well, anyway. Um, so I, I don't have anything. I got nothing on my sleeves, right? We only have the registry running. Is the point here? So now I want to simulate another client. So I'll say Docker pull, pull that image. And what's happening here? is it's saying that, uh, oh wait, I've got my signature already set up. Sorry, hold on a second. See, this is the, the demo failure. Let me fix one thing. I jumped ahead. So let me reset that. Because, um, so if I say Docker image pull, if I do not have my client configured, which is what I want, is it found a signature, but there is no keys on my machine. So it basically says, I found this image, but you have no keys that match it. So I'm not gonna allow that image to be pulled. What I wanna be able to do is configure which keys I want to be seen. So, or want to be used. So give me a second here. If I cat, the output of our configuration for the NV2 client configuration, there's no uh, certificates referenced. That's why it didn't work. If I go and change that and put a certificate in the path for it to find, now when I say Docker pull, because I've got that signature, it'll say, I'm going to pull, and the pull has got an extension to it. So the pull will first pull the manifest, find any references, and it'll go iterate through the references, look for signatures, specific signature types, and then match those with the key. All of that's happened before the image was ever even pulled. So there's no Trojan horse style attack. It was able to verify that one, one of those signatures matches one of the keys I have locally, and then it proceeds with the image pull. So if I look at my image cache locally, now I've got the net monitor image here because I have the cert. But wait, there's more. So we said we wanted to be able to talk about uh, SBOMs. So we're gonna go create the world's most simplest SBOM. And if we look at it here, we'll see 
You know, it's got some version, which is none. Uh, it references an image and it says it's good. So it must be good, right? It, it's not great. It's not awful. <laughs> it's just good. Um, clearly, this is not the kind of SBOM we want to ship in production. The idea is there could be anything, any files, could be pictures of cats and dogs, whatever. There's some document that gives some information around that image. And I want to be able to push that to a registry as an artifact that is linked to the image. So I'm going to push this SBOM JSON document, the thing we just created. I'm going to push it to this repo. Notice there's no tag. We don't see linked artifacts as needing tags because they really have no value unto themselves. They're in addition to the original, original image, original artifact. So if the netmonitor image is deleted, we want the SBOM, the signatures and everything to delete with it, just like when we copy it, we want them to go with it. So we're gonna push this file to this repo. We'll say it's an artifact type of example SBOM v0, so clearly nothing. It's referencing an artifact reference to the net monitor image. We reference it as a tag, but it, it will convert it to a digest. We don't, ref, we don't link to tags, we link to digests. And we're gonna save that manifest because we're gonna sign that in the next step. So that's simple. We've created that, taken that SBOM and pushed it to the registry. And we can see that by simply using our, um, or as discovery API again. So we're gonna discover uh, the, anything that's referenced to the NetMonitor V1 image. And if we look, we see here's the NetMonitor V1 image, and we notice here's our artifact type of an SBOM V1, V0, sorry. And there's our SBOM content is stored in this tar file. And then the uh, manifest it points to, it's pointing at our container image. So that's that reverse lookup reference back to the container image. And notice we also have an artifact type of a notary V2 signature. So those things are both linked to the artifact, to the image at that point, because notice the signature also points back to that same image. All right, so we got the SBOM, but I, I don't have that stamp on it. So let's put the stamp on that uh, SBOM. And uh, that's unfortunate. Um, hold on. Except I need that digest. So let me grab that digest. We haven't quite finished all the linking uh, experiences. So the first thing I need to do here is um, save that digest for the signature. And now when I say nv2 sign, or nv2 is our, our binary, but there's libraries that back it up you can use. I'm gonna use that x509 cert of the networks, Rabbit, Rabbit Networks key. And I'm going to reference the thing I'm signing, which is this SBOM document. I want to sign it and push it associated with the SBOM in this case, not the image, but the SBOM. So now if I do that discover one more time, I'll now see there's yet another. So I have our notary V2 signature for the actual image. I have uh, the, another notary v2 signature for the s bomb here, and then here's my s. Then I have the s bomb itself. So I now have that graph of objects that I put in the registry. They're linked to each other through references, so that when I do deletes, I want all that content to go with it. And when I want to do a copy, we can also copy that content across as a whole as well. So that whole graph can travel as one. And that, that's really what we're trying to achieve, being able to sign things that are in a registry and being able to establish that chain of references so you can put lots of things in the registry that reference, whether it be Helm charts or uh, GitOp, RegOps kind of documents or something we haven't even thought of, because that's the main thing. We're trying to enable an ecosystem to grow without us having to know about each and every type. So that's it. So how to get involved, this is our um, places to Places to find us, the easiest, the sort of central thing is the CNCF Slack, Notary V2. Um, meetings are on the CNCF calendar, um, projects on GitHub, meeting notes. It's all very, everything's open and available. The recordings are on YouTube. So um, please come along and get involved. Uh, come and talk to us if you're interested. And 
it will be in the chat with more um, more to tell you about what's going on right now rather than a few weeks ago because everything's <laughs> moving pretty fast right now. So thanks very much. Thank you.